The first time I ever got drunk, I was 14 years old. It was 1984. I was in ninth grade going on 10th. It was the beginning of summer and I was with my friend Patty Whalen. It was Saturday afternoon that stretched ahead of us and I don't remember now why we decided to get drunk that day. I suppose it was because neither of us ever had been before and I don't remember who talked about it first but there was no doubt about how to get the stuff. Every girl on the east side knew that if you needed stuff for getting drunk with, all you had to do was go down to the strip mall and hang out in front of the armed services recruiting station bit. The recruiting guy that helped us out that Saturday, well, the only mistake he made was thinking that he was invited to the party. bedroom because her bedroom was in the attic and she had the most privacy. I do remember that I was the one who insisted we get vodka because my uncle Jim drank vodka. Vodka and orange juice. Screwdrivers, he called them. The recipe was simple and the drink sounded tough. Screwdrivers. After buying the vodka, we were kind of broke, so we bought orange drink instead. Vitamin Fortified astronaut orange drink. I played bartender. I wasn't exactly certain what amount vodka and what amount orange drink would make the perfect screwdriver, so I did them half and half. Seemed like a safe bet, and the color looked right. We made a toast and drank to summertime. Patty gagged, but I stuck it out and took a big gulp, forced it down, and because I fancied myself, see... I fancied myself the kind of a girl that could mix a mean screwdriver and enjoy it. Because I was that kind of girl, I took a big gulp and forced it down. The gauntlet was laid, so Patty finished hers without complaining, but not as quick as me. I never felt so good. So funky. The late afternoon sun beamed at us through Patty's bedroom window. I never felt so good. So enchanted. Everything was funny. Everything was beautiful. We played the Eagles Hotel California on Patty's stereo and sung it in two-part harmony. For the first time in my life, I understood the lyrics, or my conception of them, or that having a conception of the meaning behind the lyrics of Hotel California was all that the Eagles required of their listeners. By God, I understood. The afternoon sun was dying, breathing its last, giving way to the cool cricket summer blue night. Patty was stone cold asleep, legs sprawled, snoring like my dad after payday. I realized with a start that I had to be home by five for dinner, and for the first time in a long time, I tried to stand up. I made my way down Patty's creaky attic stairway. and I was about to sneak through the kitchen and out the back door, but at that moment, I was caught in the stare of Patty's older brother, Dan. Dan was about 19, and he was a badass, a troublemaker. What kind of trouble, I don't really know, but he had Patty's dark hair and eyes. He was scrawny, muscled like a rock star, and I had it for him bad. He looks at me hard and sort of sniffs at the air around me. He could tell I was wasted. Dan said, man, you really fucked up. Want a ride? I lived only two blocks away, but a crush is a crush, and my legs were weak. Dan's truck rumbled down the alley. We took the alleyway. His truck smelled just like him, muscled. I was trying to act cool, but I kept hiccuping, and Dan kept looking at me out of the corner of his eye. All of a sudden, he pulls the truck over about four houses away from my house. He told me to get out.
He stood in front of me and told me to close my eyes and open my mouth. The next thing I know, he grabbed my bangs, jerked my head forward, and stuck his finger, his finger, down my throat. Once he had a good and in there, he wiggled the tip, and it was more than I could take. Dan let go of my bangs, but not before I projectile vomited over his finger, his hand, the alley. Oh, shit, no way, no way, no way he's gonna like me now. All was despair, until I heard Dan muttering, I'm sorry. I had to. Better here in the alley than in front of your mom and dad. I realized then why he did what he did. And I'll admit it, I loved him all the more. We walked down the alley quiet the rest of the way. I was feeling sick and wonderful. Wonderful and sick and marveling how each were possible. Thank you.